an expression of what's down on the inside of you. You say, well, how do I do it? How do I reboot my faith? Let me give you four things you need to do. The first one is extremely obvious for anyone who's been around the church for very long. You've got to get back into the Word again or in the Word for the first time. Come on. You've got to read the Word of God. You've got to read the Bible. You've got to know what it says. I love uh, in the next chapter of 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, Paul says, For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul was saying, listen, you know what the Word says. You know. And how many of you know that when you know God's Word, it produces faith inside of your heart? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. When you hear me preach, let me tell you, I don't want to preach my own ideas, right? I don't want to preach some pop psychology. I don't want to, I want to preach the Word of God because when I preach the Word, guess what's going to happen down on the inside of you? Faith is going to start springing up. You're going to start believing God. You're going to start saying, you know, that is who God is. Things are possible. God can do these things. Come on, somebody. We've got to get back to the the word. And I just want you to put your imagination on today. And imagine that six years ago you bought a new phone and you never ever had it updated. How many of you think that phone would just be perking along really good? You didn't ever push that little button that says update. How many of you know that phone wouldn't be functioning very well, right? <laughs> You know why? Because it needs constant updates. It needs constantly to be refreshed. And let me tell you something, that is kind of like the human spirit, am I right? We need constant updates from something that is absolutely as real and living and alive as can be. I'm talking about the Word of God. A lot of people view the Bible as some antique book, some dusty old thing that's up there on the shelf. Oh, don't you believe it for even a minute. God's Word is active. It's living. It's alive. It's powerful. And let me tell you something. When you get in it, all of a sudden you see that your faith operating system is getting updated. Come on, somebody. All of a sudden you realize, wow, God can do that. If I pray this way, look what he did for those in the Bible. If he did it for them, he can do it for me because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I just wish somebody would get excited about the Word of God. You want to know who blessed me today, last Friday night, is Richard. Richard said uh, to me, he said, listen, our pastor challenged us to read the entire Bible. So he's going to be reading the entire Bible this year. Come on, give a big hand of praise for Richard today. Amen. He's going to read the Word. Let me tell you something. I believe that his faith is going to increase as he does it. I believe in these things. Amen. If you want to reboot your faith, start reading the Bible. Amen. Amen. And then secondly, recognize that life itself produces tests and trials. The gospel that Paul preached was not a gospel that exempted those who believe from tests and trials. Paul even understood that if you're a Christian, do I got any Christians in the house? Wave at me. If you're a believer in Jesus, it is very possible that you could even have more trials. You say, Pastor, I thought you were trying to encourage me. I am. Non-Christians don't get persecuted. Non-Christians don't get ridiculed for their faith. Come on, Christians do uh, have all the trials, you know, that others have. But on occasion, they're also persecuted for their faith. And Paul had warned the church in Thessalonica. This is what he said, 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 2. He sent Timothy, he said, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. You know quite well that you were destined for them. Think about those words. Don't be unsettled by these trials. You knew you were destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that you would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. There's a false gospel in our world today that says that if you have faith in God, if you trust in God, that your life will somehow be perfect. 
You'll never face any difficulties. You're going to raise perfect kids. You're going to get one raise after another. Life is going to be just a breeze for you. I wish I could preach that gospel, but it's absolutely not true. Paul tells us you're going to face trials. Things are going to happen. Jesus said in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Okay, so don't be unsettled by trials. And many times there are wonderful Christians who their faith is doing phenomenal. They're doing great in life. And then all of a sudden something happens and now all of a sudden their faith is crumbling and they're saying, oh no, why is this happening to me? Uh Uh-oh, what am I going to do now? On and on and on. You know what? They forgot something that life is going to have some tests and trials. So I've got some good news and some bad news today, all right? The bad news is in 2020 you're going to face some tests and trials, but I've got some good news for you today as well. Amen. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Come on. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Come on. He said he has made you more than a conqueror. How can you live as a a conqueror if you never have to conquer anything? Come on, somebody. God tells us we're going to have difficulties in the year. But let me tell you something. You're going to overcome them. You're going to stand firm. You're going to trust in the Lord. And God's going to be by your side. He's never going to fail you. Come on, somebody. A lot of people think that Faith is simply saying certain positive words. Don't get me wrong. I think we ought to say positive words. Tell your neighbor, be positive. we got to be positive in life. <laughs> I believe in a good confession to the Lord. But let me tell you something. Faith is not some kind of a mind game where we just pretend like things aren't happening around us. No. We can absolutely, if you're a believer in Jesus, you can absolutely face the facts of your life, whatever they may be, the facts of your kid's life, the facts that you're going to face in 2020, and you can face them with, as, as reality. I want to go to Romans chapter 4 for just a moment. How many of you remember Abraham? Abraham was the father of faith, and and God had given him a promise. He said, you're going to have a son by by Sarah. And now he's 100 years old. He was old. Come on. I've been told I'm looking a little older, all right? I used to be in my late 40s. Now I'm 60-something, all right? That's all right. I can face the fact. Amen. Look, Caleb was old too. Hello? Hello? Caleb was 85 years old. He said, give me that mountain because I'm as strong today at 85 as I was when I was 40. Come on. Excuse me while I preach to myself a little bit. That wasn't for you. You got to face the facts of your life. And this is what Abraham did. He said, without weakening in his faith, look what he said. He faced the fact. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. It's okay to face the facts of your life. You may have some issues, some tests, some trials, some facts that you don't particularly like. I'm sure Abraham didn't like that. But notice the next verse. It says, Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave Glory to God. Do you know what that means? He worshiped the Lord. Come on. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. I'm just telling you today that faith is not pretending that you don't have a problem. Faith is facing the facts. Faith is looking at those facts accurately and still being fully persuaded that the God that you serve is fully able to deliver on the things that he promised. Come on, can we give God a big hand of praise? So I said all that to say this, when a test or trial comes in 2020, don't freak out, okay? Don't break down. Don't waver. Don't slide off into unbelief. It's going to be all right. Amen. Don't go into a tailspin. Don't get depressed, but rather go to the promises of God and strengthen your faith with that until you become fully persuaded that God is able to be trusted, that you can stand and believe in Him and stand and trust Him, and your faith will be strong. Oh, come on. Oh, that was so much fun. I almost want to preach that again. Hallelujah. Come on, because it's real. 
You say, who are we? We're real Christians in a real world that struggle with real problems, but we got a real God who has real power to really deliver us. Come on, somebody. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on.